Hello there friends and welcome for today's updated companion build we have Greybor the Assassin. With this build, your Greybor will be able to easily slice and dice through enemy demons even without elemental barrage, as we'll get to combine a very high amount of dual wielded strength based attacks that have the best critical range possible without a trickster thanks to our Kukris, amazing damage per hit even outside of critical hits that is definitely more than 400, close to 500 damage on a critical hit, and around 150 to 200 on a normal hit. And some other very fun abilities through our multi-classing. Just like my previously released Wojif guide, watching this build in action is very fun because of all of the attacks we have. So without further ado, let us get into our Greybor dual building build. Alright, so Greybor comes pretty late at level 9 so you only have from 10 upwards to customize him. While he does start as a Slayer, which is one of the most solid classes in the game overall, for this updated guide, well, he'll still get some levels into Slayer, but I'm also going to mix it up with a few other classes. For starters, he desperately is in need of some feats, and we have to get them fast, such as Outflank, Improved Critical, and the last dual wielding feat. Plus, we also have to make space for the entire Shatter Defenses package, which is why, right now, I'd much rather go with Fighter and Mutation Warrior up to level 14, so 5 levels of it. With this, you'll get a lot of bonus feats very fast, plus the ever so useful Mutagen to increase his strength, and lastly, also weapon training, which can be further increased to gear, so you won't need to spend a lot of levels into Fighter. As far as Graber skills, that's going to depend on what other skills your party members are already covering for you, since you get him somewhat late. When it comes to stealth, I'd rather leave it for characters like Camellia, Arushalei or Lon. Athletics is always a nice skill because he will have very high strength. Mobility can work as well because I don't have many characters that are capable of it. And lastly, Perception, although if you already have someone for mobility, you can skip it. As a matter of fact, I'd rather get at the very least one point in use magic device, the rest we can get later on, because being able to cast spells from scrolls is always useful for a character that is not a spellcaster. Now let's get into our feats. Honestly, outflank is a must-have, is a sin that Greybor does not have it before, especially because he is a dual wielder character, who will soon get very high critical range too. And at this point, definitely your whole party already has outflank. Now this is pretty important, before level 11, be sure to equip Greybor with a belt of plus 4 dexterity, which at the point you get him chapter 3 is pretty easy to get. You can buy one from the Skeletal Merchant at random map encounters, there's also one from the vendor of the latest DLC, the Treasure of the Midnight Isles, and I'm pretty sure we can get one from the Temple of the Good Hunt map area too, which is super close to your capital city. The main reason is so we can qualify for greater 2 weapon fighting, without having to get it as a Slayer talent. Then for a bonus feat, improve at critical, and I'd say you have two different weapon choices. Unfortunately, Graber's default weapons, Dwarven War Axes, are kinda underwhelming. Despite them being the weapon of a story party member, we have good rapers because of Camellia, good daggers for Wojif, but as far as Dwarven War Axes, we don't have many good ones. I'd much rather go for Kukris. First, they are light weapons, which means you have reduced set penalties, when dual wielding them. Second, they have the best critical range possible. Now you might also consider going with scimitars instead. The only issue is they aren't light weapons like Kukri, so they have a higher penalty to attack bonus. The choice is up to you, I'll just be going with Kukris because I prefer higher AB. With Mutation Warrior, thankfully just by level 11 we basically salvage Greybor's build. Now I'd rather keep Mutation Warrior until level 5, so 14, so we can get the Mutagen and weapon training. At level 12, increase strength, which is also what you should increase on level 16, so now we also have the highly powerful Mutagen at super high duration to 30 minutes, more than enough for any dungeon in the game. At level 13, since we are a level 4 Mutation Warrior, we can pick weapon specialization, but to specialize in the weapons we want, first go for the weapon focus, because Greybor only has weapon focus in Dwarven War Access, so weapon focus and either Kukris or Scimitars. Then weapon specialization as a bonus feat, the same. At level 14, pick weapon training into either Light Blades if you went with Kukris or Heavy Blades for Scimitars. Now after 5 levels in Mutation Warrior is when I would resume Slayer progression. For level 15, we might as well get started into our Shatter Defenses package, so doesn't display. Greybor unfortunately will only be able to get Shatter Defenses at 17 instead of 15. And you might ask, why am I not picking combat reflexes, since this is an attack of opportunity focus build, 
with high critical range, dual build at Kukris. Well, by the time you get Greybor, you already have plus two attacks of opportunity from the Ever Ready Mythic ability, and also a plus one from the Clemency of Shadows Crusade Relic Ring. For a total of four per round, which I think is more than enough, for now go with Dazzling Display, and then as a Slayer talent, while you could potentially pick Combat Streak and Shatter Defenses right now, I think it's a bit wasteful because it's much more efficient to go for the advanced Slayer talents, which can only be picked as a talent, you cannot get them through normal feats unlike Shatter Defenses. What you should get now is Opportunist, one of the most powerful advanced talents, because it pretty much gives you an extra attack per round, boosted by the highly powerful Ever Ready Mythic ability. I'd continue Slayer progression until around level 17 for the last sneak attack and Slayer talent. For level 17, Shatter Defenses at last, and then you have two choices as an advanced talent, either Dispelling Attack or Wearing Strike. Dispelling can of course dispel buffs from the enemies, otherwise Wearing Strike can reduce enemy's constitution by one for every sneak attack hit. Considering how many attacks we have, that's a lot. The only downside is most of the bosses are actually immune to ability damage. The choice is up to you. If you are, let's say, a Merged Lich or an Angel, who has an easy time dispelling enemies, then go for wearing strike, otherwise you might as well pick the spelling attack. Now, from 18 to 20, I would rather multi-class yet again, because the reality is, we already have almost everything we could want from Slayer. You can, of course, keep Slayer for the last stack of study target and sneak attack. I just don't think it's that efficient. What I would rather go now for, however, is Ranger and Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer grants you a plus 2 to attack and damage against all demons in the game with just one level. It's not only lore appropriate for Greybor, but also very efficient gameplay wise. As for level 19 to 20, well, you can either keep Slayer or I'd rather go for Fighter and Mutation Warrior, mostly for the bonus feat and also the Mutagen Discovery. The choice now is really up to you. If you want to go with something else, feel free to do it. Right now, you can pick Combat Reflexes if you want, I just don't think at this point it's going to be much of a difference. What I'd rather pick is Advanced Weapon Training, Trained Initiative, to increase our initiative by plus 3. If you went with Scimitars, you can also pick Effortless Dual Wielding, even pick this earlier if you prefer, to eliminate the Dual Wielding penalty from Scimitars and treat them just as if they were Kukris. And then, Improved Initiative. At level 20, increase Strength if you have a Trickster Party, otherwise, Intelligence. This will also result in a lot of bonus skill points. You might as well just spend them all into UMD. Then as your discovery, you pretty much have to pick Feral Mutagen. <laughs> it's an extra bite attack, I mean, not that much of a difference because we only get it to level 20, but it's better than nothing. All right, now let us focus on Mythic progression for our dual building Greybor. For Mythic 1, because he is somewhat of a glass cannon, I would definitely go for last stand, even if you weren't on unfair. Just remember, you can still protect your Greybor through Concealment, Damage Reduction, Temporary Hit Points, and by having him start at the back of your party, it's not just AC. And when all of that fails, you have less stand to rely on. For Mythic 2, either Mythic 2 weapon fighting or Mythic Power Attack. I prefer Mythic Power Attack because I went with Kukris who are already light weapons, with less dual wielding penalties. Power Attack can help a lot because the damage will be multiplied on a critical hit, and Kukris have very high critical range. For Mythic 3, ever ready, no doubt, a must have for any melee build, especially Greybor since you won't get combat reflexes. For Mythic 4, definitely Mythic Critical and then either Kukri or Scimitar. For Mythic 5, you have a few options. If you have a Scald to provide pounds for your party to Greater Beast Totem, I would really consider going with Mythic Charge, because you can add a lot of extra damage, and for dual wielding characters, whenever you charge with Pounce, you basically unleash all your flurry of multiple attacks in the span of seconds. It's really amazing. But if you don't have a Skull, this kinda useless, so you can then go with Always a Chance. Defense Study, I mean, it can help a bit, but it's just going to be like plus 3 to AC, it's not really that powerful. Elemental Barrage sadly was nerfed for melee and ranged attacks. We don't really have that many other powerful options. As far as Unrelenting Assault, because of how fast you kill enemies, at least with my builds focused on attacks of opportunity, battles won't really last long enough for the bonus to become big, but you can go with it if you want. For me, since I always go with Skulls, it is Mythic Charge. As far as Mythic 6, Mythic to weapon fighting to completely eliminate all dual wielding penalties. But if you prefer, you can also go with Mythic Specialization now. For Mythic 7, I'd go with Always a Chance, as a dual wielder, you will roll some ones, 
which unfortunately are critical misses because of how many attacks you have. It's not that this mythic ability is amazing, it's just that at this point we kind of already have the best picks. For mythic 8, mythic weapon specialization and then your weapon. For mythic 9 you can go with anything you want, you might as well pick defensive study, if only because we have everything that's great already. Or even unrelenting assault. Thundering blows can work too, but it's not really that powerful unless all your party members have it and they are missing a lot. As far as mythic level 10, mythic improved initiative. Alright, now let's talk about gear for our Greybor. As far as the amulet slot, earlier amulets that increase initiative like quick draw, combat awareness, and wind breath. Later, voracious spirit. For the armor slot, since you went to fighter, Greybor will be able to equip even heavy armors, so you might as well go with mithril full place for the best AC. But there's always the chain mail of camaraderie to highly increase his damage, especially since he is dual wielding. For the shirt slot, I like Blazing Fighter to increase his athletics, but eventually you might as well go for the Cloth of Heavy Fortification for another layer of defense when it comes to sneak attacks and critical hits. For belts, belts that increase strength, later strength and constitution, or you can just increase everything with physical perfection ones. For gloves, when it comes to this build, Ferris's gift will be by far the best, not just because of the extra damage to the offhand, but most importantly the plus 2 to weapon training for a nice plus 3. For boots, there aren't really any special ones, I just like the boots of Stampede because my Gripper likes to charge, and we do have high ranks into athletics for even more damage. As far as helmet, the ultimate one for this build is definitely Shy Lily for the extra bonus to strength so we can stack it as high as possible. The main character themselves can just get profane from Nocticulous Gift, the same cannot be said about party members. Other than that, mostly the helmets that increase initiative, and there's always triple finchu for the extra gore attack. For Google's piercing gaze, as always. And for cloaks, cloaks of resistance with the highest modifier. As far as rings, I like Marty's testament on Greybor for the same reason I like it on Mojif, the immunity to mind affecting conditions. For most of the game his will will be pretty low, and you really don't want him getting confused and attacking your own party. Besides that, the ring of evasion as usual, to avoid mythic demon spellcasters area of effect spells. As far as braces, heavy hand is the best one for any dual wielder, so we can really get our offhand damage as high as possible. Now let's cover weapons and quick slots. Honestly, I still think the best Kukris are the ones you find earlier, so... First, the Shock Flaming Corrosive Kukri for triple elemental damage. Even if most demons will resist this and we don't have elemental barrage anymore, remember, you can and should use the Bane of Spirit special ability to convert all of Greybor's damage into force, which is irresistible, including the elemental procs here. For the offhand, the Radiant Kukri plus one for the nice Radiant property which adds 1d6 positive energy on every hit, and as far as I'm aware this is irresistible too. Now, if you're going to be spamming the Bane of Spirit Ring, which is very spammable by the way, I cover how to get it in my best Crusade Relics guide, that you can check to the side here on the pinned comment down below, you might consider going with either the Astringent Pacifier or the Abrupt End Kukris for your offhand, as they also have elemental damage which would be converted by Bane of Spirit into irresistible. Even if these two Kukris that I have here are of lower enchantment, you can always make them plus 5 anyways, through the greater magic weapon spell. And don't forget, Crusader's Edge is a must have for both of them. For your quick slots, the Dragon Familiar Jarsegax can add extra elemental damage, which is great for dual wielders, since it's also going to be converted by Bane of Spirit. Depending on how high you get your Greybor's used magic device, it can also provide divine support through, for example, heal and mass heal scrolls. Lucky Dice is always a nice item to have, and lastly, if you don't want to bother with Greybor's armor class, then you can just give him the Triceratops pet through the Bismuth statuette anyways. And since by the time you recruit Greybor you will already have this statue, as you get it at the end of chapter 2, they are kinda perfect fits for each other. Well alright, so this was it for my updated Greybor build guide. If you found it useful as always, please remember to like, subscribe and even consider becoming a channel member as your support is highly appreciated. Thank you for watching and see you next time friends, most likely with my updated Nanyo build, so we can truly be done with all of the companions for the enhanced edition of the game.